Hi, I'm Rob from Subways IO. Welcome to Signals 101 Extra Credit. Signals 102 is coming soon, but before that, we wanted to dive into an important and relevant topic. Today's topic survey markers and line chains. One essential but often overlooked part of subway operations closely connected to signaling is the use of survey markers, also known as line chains. Here at Subways IO, we reference these chains frequently as they provide a consistent reference point across all areas of subway planning, from blueprints and construction to modern day operations. In the NYCT system, these chains help pinpoint exact locations. This system is based on the 100 foot engineer's chain of measurement method that dates back to land surveying practices in the 1700s. This approach has been crucial in guiding and measuring subway construction throughout the years. Ever noticed a series of numbers like these? They indicate the distance of a particular location along the line from chain zero, the starting point for measurements. In the current system, several chain zeros are established. One such zero point is located at 38 and Park, marking the starting point for the Jerome, Pelham, and Lexington Avenue lines and the line chains. This is where the 1918 Lexington Avenue extension diverges from the original main line. As a northbound train passes 38th Street, it transitions from line chain MM with its chain zero located south of this point to the new line L chain, which starts at zero feet and increases as the train continues north. With survey markers placed on designated walls and columns along the right of way to help identify specific locations. These markers, along with signal identification plates, can be used to calculate distance. To find the exact distance between two points, simply subtract the survey number on one marker from the number on the other. While the survey numbers on the signals are approximate, they are more easily visible from the front of a moving train, making them useful for estimating distance traveled. Now let's examine a survey marker. Here we are at the 138th Street Station, built as part of Route 5 on the Lexington Avenue line. In this marker, the letter J indicates the line chain, in this case J for the Jerome line, covering the northern end of the Lexington Avenue line and extending to Woodlawn from the Harlem River tubes. Number 1 represents the track number. 271 plus 00 tells us the location is 27,100 feet from chain 0, or approximately 5.1 miles from 38th Street and Park Avenue. Markers are spaced every 50 feet, giving a trains the ability to get their detailed locations. Signals are directly overlaid on chains with every signal plate displaying the chain letter and number directly correlated to markers. Now let's look at signal plates and their meanings. The New York City subway system has two main types of signal plates, those in the A division, or IRT, and those in the B division, which includes B1 and B2, or XBMT and IND. Starting with the B division on a signal plate, the top line shows the line chain, marked by an F with the track number to the right. The bottom line shows the signal location, using the first three numbers based on survey marks. In the A division, signal plates work a bit differently. Here, the top of the plate displays the signal number, which can be up to four digits, and the chain does not show a track number. One notable exception is the Dyer Avenue line. When it was integrated into the New York Transit System in 1941, it initially operated under the IND until 1957 when it connected to the IRT via a flyover. This history is why Dyer Avenue retains B Division signal plates a holdover from its IND past. Let's take a closer look at the route of today's 4 train to better understand how line chains work. This line runs about 20 miles from Woodlawn in the Bronx to Crown Heights in Brooklyn. Along the way, it crosses 5 different line chains and 2 chain zero points. Starting with the northern section from Woodlawn down to the Harlem River tubes, this part of the route is covered by IRT Line J. Then, as the train moves along Lexington Avenue, it transitions to Line L, continuing down to 38th and Park. At this point, the line connects to the original subway route. This location at 38th Street serves as chain zero for both the Jerome Line and the Lexington Avenue lines. At 38th Street, the route moves onto Line MM, which has a chain zero at Brooklyn Bridge and is also shared with the 42nd Street Shuttle. The Manhattan Main Line, or MM, continues south with another chain zero at Brooklyn Bridge. At this point, the chain transitions from MM to M, covering Lower Manhattan and the Jeralamont Street tubes. Beyond this point, the E-chain continues the route into Brooklyn along Eastern Parkway, still using Brooklyn Bridge as its chain zero. Each subway division has its own unique line chains. In Division B1, for example, Line E refers to the Sea Beach Line, which connects to the BMT chain zero at 57th Street and 7th Avenue. In Division B2, however, Line E represents the Crosstown Line, while in Division A, Line E refers to the Eastern Parkway Line. For routes assigned to Line D, these also vary by division. In the IRT, Line D corresponds to the Nostrand Avenue Line. In the BMT, it's the West End Line, and in the IND, it's the Queens Boulevard Line.
The chain's zero locations in the B Division subways are spread across four main points. For Division B1, the chain zero is set at Chambers Street for Line J and at 57th Street for Lines A through H. There's also a reverse tie for Line R from the Montague Street tubes. For Line Q, the chain zero is placed on 8th Avenue and for Division B2, there's a unique chain zero 18 miles south of the platform at West 4th Street in Lower New York Bay. Some of the chain zeros even date back to before the subway system was established. For example, the old Park Row station of the Brooklyn Elevated System still serves as chain zero for BMT lines M&O, covering the Myrtle Avenue and Franklin Shuttle. The IND line K also has its chain zero at Park Row, the eastern end of the old Fulton Street BMT line. Um, even older is the IND line F and FA on the Rockaway line, which remains tied to the Long Island Railroad Rockaway Beach branch via the Loa Montauk with its chain zero point located in Long Island City. Railroad chains have been used in other parts of the subway system as well. For example, the IRT's Line Y, also known as the Dyer Avenue Line, originally followed the New York, Westchester, and Boston Railroad chain, beginning at the Harlem River Yard. In the mid-2010s, this line was rechained to the IRT Chain Zero located at 97th Street and Broadway. To finish up, let's dive into track designations and setups. Track setups and labels vary by division, but when it comes to maintenance of way or MOW, many aspects are nearly identical aside from a few differences like in third rail setup. Check out our short video on some of these differences and stay tuned for future 101s where we'll cover more about MOW topics. First, let's cover the basics. In the subway system, all tracks are designated as northbound or southbound regardless of the actual direction the train is moving. These directions are defined relative to Manhattan, with southbound trains moving from Manhattan into Brooklyn, or from the Bronx and Queens into Manhattan, now on to the IRT. In subdivision A, track 1 is the southbound local, track 2 is the southbound express, track 3 is the northbound express, and track 4 is the northbound local. So to summarize, tracks 1 and 2 are southbound while tracks 3 and 4 are northbound. In subdivision B, track 1 is the southbound local, track 2 is the northbound local, track 3 is the southbound express, and track 4 is the northbound express. To recap, southbound tracks are 1 and 3, while northbound tracks are 2 and 4. Here's the one exception to this rule, the J-Line in subdivision B. On the J-Line, a train traveling from Brooklyn into Manhattan is considered southbound, while a train heading from Manhattan back to Brooklyn is northbound. This means that track 1 on the BMT Line J is designated as a northbound track. We hope this video has helped clarify the importance of markers within the system and their connection to signals. Amber will return with Signals 102, where we'll cover timers, key-by-signals, call-ons, and more. If you're enjoying our content, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe. This really helps us out. And if you'd like to support us even more, consider buying us a coffee. There's a link in the description, and every bit helps us bring you more content. I'm Rob for Subways.io. Until next time.